Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, Season 1, Episode 8 with Greg Webb. Today's guest has been a compassionate, devoted Touch for Health proponent through a thriving massage therapy practice. I found Greg back in the early 2000s when my body had fallen apart from emotional and physical stress, and I was no longer able to walk any distance without significant pain and challenge. This was before Google had a search engine that could easily be plugged into the search bar and anyone could find anything. My first appointment with Greg, we talked about my goals at the very start of the session. Goals to get rid of the pain. That was all I needed. And that was what had driven me to find him. But his question was, what did I really want to be doing? He introduced me to the body's recorder, a point on my shoulder, which he held while I talked and through all the things in front of me that I thought was my goal. At the end of all my talking, he asked, so what is it you want? And it was no longer to be rid of the pain, but I actually had a vision of purpose and success well past the pain. He stopped the energetic recorder and said, now we can start now. I had not been able to see clearly until that moment. Then Greg began to check the energetic connection of my muscle and structure to the goal. That is using muscle positions that put a muscle through its range of motion and then take it to its extended position and checking for the integration of the muscle to hold when only a few pounds of pressure is applied. Nothing worked. Every muscle released. No wonder I was in pain. My body no longer knew how to get past the pain, but was stuck within it. And that was my introduction to the techniques of touch for health. And that was my introduction to taking classes and how to use these techniques and to being an instructor. Greg's dedication to the power of the techniques drew me into wanting to know more, to having the power to assist myself and others so they could live without pain also. So today's episode is titled, The Power Within the Touch for Health System. And you're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, episode eight. Hi, Greg. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for the opportunity to have a discussion about Touch for Health. I just, this is so great to be able to talk today. We're like kids in a playground together. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Now, typically I start off the show with something about tea. Um, and it's just a way for me to, to have people stop and sit down and take a few moments. They might be driving in their car, um, but if they're actually seated or have a moment to stop, then I just like them to think about what they could prepare, have a nice warm beverage and just to sit and relax and enjoy the conversation. So um, have you got something beside you today? My trusty travels everywhere with me a water bottle. <laughs> Even into the office. <laughs> everywhere I go, it's my, uh, my extra appendage. So what I thought about today was I have a friendship mug that actually comes from Alberta and it looks like the Rocky Mountains and it actually even has what could look like a little cow sitting on it. Um, and then I was thinking about, well, what kind of tea would I put into it? So I chose the Alberta mug because that's where you are. And uh, I always remember my friends from Alberta um, with this mug. Um, but then I went to my broken leaf tea. And I wanted to try to describe what I experienced with broken leaf. And it's usually a, a softness in the tea. And I couldn't quite describe that. So I actually looked it up this morning because I knew broken leaf was a different way of processing tea. And what it actually does is it, it lowers, and I hope I get this word right, the thene content, um, which means that the oxidized polyphenols release a stimulating effect similar to caffeine, but in a slower way. So then you just become alert, but in a gentle uh, motion, which I thought was kind of cool. Cause when I drink it, I just kind of feel like smooth. And I thought, yep, yeah, that's the, that's the tea for today. <laughs> so I know tea's not your favorite thing on the list, but I like to share that with everyone. Nice. Okay. So Greg, I shared how I found you and the profound influence you've had on my life. Um, how did you find touch for health? I'll tell you that in a minute, but before I do, there's some things that you spoke about that I want to talk about before I forget to talk about them. 
So you mentioned about how we worked with uh, with a goal, and then we checked your muscles. And uh, as so, the, the purpose of the goal is, uh, uh, I don't know, the purpose of how it works is, as a person, we live a life, and we live a life through our body, and our body helps us express how we live our life. And oftentimes, as we go through our life, we experience moments of joy, we experience moments of stress, we experience a whole variety of moments. And all parts of our body are always paying attention to how we move through life. So when we're doing a touch for health balance, uh, the whole purpose of setting an objective is it gives, uh, it brings an awareness to a person's whole body, whole body being physical and your energy body as well and your emotional body and your brain and how you think about things. But it helps to bring a focus and an awareness to your body of how your body can work with you to do something with greater ease. So then you, you have a little bit of a conversation, you establish an objective, you kind of narrow it down to, I think this is the important part. And you go, okay, that's good. And then I'll, I'll have the person, most of us touch for health practitioners will have the person either say or keep in mind that, that statement as you go through and you <clears throat> check each one of the muscles. You can see on the chart behind me, the touch for health chart, that big one up there. It shows how each of the muscles of the body correspond to an acupuncture meridian, an organ or a gland, and become a way that the organs and glands and meridians can then express themselves. So when we check a muscle and it lets go, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. All that is is that is it's that muscle, that organ, that gland, that meridian, and everything that it corresponds with going, oh my God, you can help me with this? Oh, that is so fabulous. Can I have some too, right? So every muscle that unlocks is always a great sign of the body stepping forward in cooperation to being able to do things with greater ease and with greater ease and greater capacity and greater strength. And when the muscle unlocks initially, and then we apply some corrections, most often within Touch for Health, we work with the circulatory reflexes for lymphatic and vascular and as well with, with the acupuncture meridian, the sort of our standard corrections as well as the nervous system. But what that does is it helps to shift the belief and the capacity and the ability of the organ and the gland and the meridian and the muscle towards assisting you in an easy path towards your objective. So this can be done either with somebody when you're, you're on the receiving end laying on the table. It can be done with yourself, giving yourself a balance. Or as you've demonstrated, Michelle, many, many, many times in your videos, it can be done by simply setting an intention and then moving your body because it's the movement of the muscles while you're setting an intention that helps to shift how you're able to do things in your life. It makes it helps to make the muscles stronger, but it helps also to reduce the pain a person might be experiencing. So then back to how did I discover touch for health? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get that in before before it disappeared on, on my thought bubbles, right? Perfect. Um, so uh, being a good old Alberta boy, growing up on a farm with a dad who was a rock hound, uh, I decided that I wanted to become a petroleum geological technician. So off to Nate, I went 77 to 79, got myself a, a two-year uh, diploma in petroleum technology. Loved the whole geology field. It was great fun, great fun actually. And and uh, to tell you the truth, doing body work and using touch for health muscle monitoring in in my clinic practice very much reminds me of doing geology work because it's exploration. You explore for for data and then you find what to do about it, right? So uh, working downtown Calgary, had some body aches and pains. I lear learned at an early age, oh, about age five or six or so, something like that from jumping out of a grain truck on the farm and hurting myself, <laughs> the chiropractic was a good way to take care of yourself. So I went to see a chiropractor in Calgary, Dr. Bob Haycock, who had quite a large footprint on the city of Calgary. He really did, especially in the complementary health community. But Bob Haycock was one of the early adopters of applied kinesiology slash touch for health in his clinic practice. And he would use it to find what parts of my spine and my skeleton needed adjustment and in which direction. And then he would, with his safe cracker-like hands go about applying his chiropractic skills with great, great adeptness. And then he would again check the muscles corresponding to that spinal segment to confirm that that spinal segment was now in a position of life energy alignment. The muscle held strong, but my aches and pains went away. I went, this is pretty cool. And I'd ask him continual questions about it. He would show me different ways that the muscle would respond and it would strengthen or it would, then he could switch it off and then he could switch it back on. 
So the, in switching off the muscle would let go and switching it on, it would re-engage again. Found the whole thing fascinating. Uh, so that was 80, 80, 81, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, he also introduced me to a herbalist iridologist here in town. And she used touch for health muscle testing for, in an entirely different way. She used it with, along with uh, test kit vials. So test kits are tiny little glass vials that will have a vibrational signature of, in, in her case, there were vitamins and minerals and herbs and or foods, that type of thing. And she used it to help me find out what it was that I was really enjoying eating that my body wasn't enjoying as much as I did. <laughs> so it's pretty common with humans that we'll put things in our mouth that we really enjoy that are maybe not very good for our body. So you, she used touch for health muscle testing to help me find out which things I should be eating more of and less of, and as well out of her cornucopia of herbal supplements, which of her multiple dozens, if not hundreds of supplements that she could provide me with were the most appropriate for me to be taking and how many a day and for how long. She also used it uh, in practice with her iridology. Trip. So iridology is like a map of the reflexes of the eye. And one of the, the neat things about muscle monitoring as your skill adapts, you learn how to use other clinic resources and you can muscle check and muscle monitor off of other clinic resources to help guide you as a clinician in your skill set towards how to best help. So she would be muscle monitoring off the various things that she would see looking into my eyes of to which is the priority target systems to work on first, second, third, fourth. So it's just, it, it becomes this wonderful way of interacting with things. And as uh, kind of reviewing for our, our chat this morning, uh, this, this analogy came to mind. We've all had soup, right? Mm -hmm. And we've all made soup, we've all eaten soup. And soup is a combination of broth and ingredients. And in the absence of broth, the ingredients are just sort of there by themselves and they don't have as fulfilling a life. Touch for health and what it brings is the broth. It brings, it brings the cohesiveness, it brings the togetherness and it brings all the ingredients alive. And one of the things that I've so much appreciated about my touch for health background, in case you're wondering what a touch for health book looks like, you can get it without reflection on. That is the complete edition by uh, John and Matthew the John being the father, founder of Touch for Health, and Matthew being his son, who has done a wonderful job of taking over the helm, internationally speaking. Lovely, lovely gentlemen, both of them. Um, great course, great book, buy it, read it, and <laughs> learn it. Um, but Mine doesn't look <laughs> as pristine as yours, so you must have a new copy. It's, uh, it's a new copy. <laughs> <laughs> My, <laughs> mine is very, very, very beat up, and uh, it's Kind of funny because space-time repetition is the mother of all learning, and I can say that I probably have most of this just sort of on random access memory up here, <laughs> yeah. just again from so much use over the years. Yeah, but uh, that's how I found Touch for Health, and then what I've found in, in just sort of in traveling throughout the years is that you'll see muscle monitoring being done in a whole myriad of situations, anything from at the front of a trade, uh, front of a, 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 a motivational speaker seminar where they'll show how a person thinks of something which is stressful to them, the arm unlocks. So have them think of a beneficial statement and the arm holds strong as a demonstration of how their body reflects their mental, emotional energy. There's, there's so many ways that it's done, but any place that you ever see muscle monitoring done for the purpose of communication with the human body and allowing the body to speak, that's the real gem is it allows your body, the knowledge inherent within the body to have an opportunity for conversation. And the conversation will be in regards with what the skill set and the knowledge base is of the combined two people working together. So regardless of your skill set, really, absolutely, totally, regardless of your skill set, what the ability to muscle monitor does is it brings that conversation to life from any and all aspects of your skill set. And as, a, as an avid student, so my, my favorite thing to do with my spare free, free time, I'm a science geek. I'll go find something to, to study and learn about, about brain or neurology or body energetics or anatomy or physiology. That's, that's how I love to spend my spare time, it really is. But uh, it, it enables all that stuff to come together. Nope, that was just a thought bubble that disappeared. I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but 
it, it does tie it all together. It really is. It's uh, so how did I, and then how did I find touch Rail? Yeah, through those three. And then I've even seen it done for those who are exploring um, spiritual journey. Um, it's just so many, so many applications, it, but it allows, it allows our life and our body to communicate because a way that I'll often explain it to people that are unfamiliar with it is I'll say, so of all the meals that you've eaten in your life, how many did you have to give your body instructions on how to digest? None. Of all the days that you've been awake and asleep, how many of those did you actually have to give instructions to your brain of how to go to sleep? None. Of any boo-boos that you've had or any illnesses that you've had, how many did you actually have to personally give the instructions to your body of how to heal them? None. Our body has its own intelligence. It's in incredibly intelligently designed. And as I pursue my studies deeper, my jaw dropping, my awe, my awe at the intelligence of design of not only the human body, but all living, all living beings is pretty amazing. But the ability, the ability to communicate via a muscle response cannot be underestimated for its creative potential. And that's probably part of the reason why this simple little book, Touch for Health, <laughs> and its predecessor, Applied Kinesiology, out of Dr. George Goodhart, have resulted in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of individual separate modalities because it's such a creative potential tool for a person to use in their everyday life for their family, their friends, and or in clinic practice. And that was the goal for John Thee was it would be in the hands of everyone in their house so they could help Why each other. On every corner and to be in everybody's house. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I would love that objective. Um, can you share a little bit about how Touch for Health has helped your massage practice? Because I think for a lot of people, they don't really understand how, you know, what would be the benefit of adding it to some of the other tools that they already have? You got a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a whole other discussion. The brief, the brief <laughs> one. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, so I had my initial exposure to Touch for Health, and that was when I was in the oil industry. And uh, thanks to the National Energy Program, myself and several hundreds of thousands of other people who used to work in the oil industry found themselves looking for a new career. And uh, it seemed to be a father-son repeated uh, political scenario going on here. Anyways, <laughs> um, so in 1990, uh, one entered into massage therapy school. And a, a few months into that, there was a Touch for Health course being offered that I heard about. And I went, oh, Touch for Health. Awesome. I'd like to take that. Because when I was in massage therapy school, it was really good uh, anatomy and physiology, and you're learning how to hand, learning good hands-on technique, learning how to how to listen with your hands is really important. How to listen and feel with your hands is an important part of massage therapy training. And um, but I knew that there were segments of how our body works that weren't covered in the curriculum of the massage therapy program. And that wouldn't be any different now in 2021 than it was in 91. There's still segments of how the body works that aren't covered in a standard curriculum. And so when I took the Touch for Health course, about an hour or so into the Friday evening, there was this big loud head went off my head, the big loud voice went off my head that went, Greg, whatever you need to do to share this information with others, you must. But it was because there were so many of the, the cracks in between the knowledge base that was being presented in the standard massage therapy training that were being tied together by what was being introduced to in Touch for Health. I knew there was an energy body, but there was no talk about that in the massage school. I knew as we had our hands on the body that we had our hands in the energy body. There was no talk about that in massage school. With Touch for Health, it brought to life the acupuncture meridian lines, which are one of the most easy to work with aspects of the energy body. It brought together those in the, in the flow patterns that they have. It brought together how muscles can have their circulation improved so touch for health again i said that initially we work with circulation reflexes what's one of the absolute objectives of massage therapy improve circulation how do you improve circulation you get the lymphatic system to drain you get the vascular system to put in fresh blood in in touch for health our first reflexes we go to are lymphatic reflexes followed by neurovat followed by vascular system reflexes and what those reflexes do effectively is they turn tiny little drinking straws into garden hoses. And if you're gonna water your garden, you'll do water faster with a garden hose than you will a drinking straw. So they make the flow better. What I find on a palpation basis, so in massage therapy, 
you learn how to palpate for textural differences in the in the musculature and as where the muscles attach to the bone at the tendons and then the feel of the ligaments as well. You, you pick up a sense for how that feels in your hands. And then the objective is to apply some kind of a, a hands-on application of, of pressure and working those tissues in various ways to then provide a softening and a cohesiveness and a smoothness to the feel. And then you've, you've gained your objective as you no longer have a rigidity, you now have smoothness and hopefully the tenderness is less. What I've learned, and this is one of my favorite ways to demonstrate uh, touch for health to a brand new client that's never experienced it that comes in from massage is people come in because they got aches and pains. Maybe they can you just get your elbow in there and grind really hard? Well, yeah, I can, but there's a faster way. <laughs> so what I will do is I will find that little tender spot and I'll rub on it and I'll ask them how it feels because it will be fibrous and it will have a rigidity to it, right? And the muscles in and around the area will also have fibrousness and rigidity to them as well perhaps at a different scale, but it'll be there, right? And they'll go, oh yeah, that's a tender spot. You found a real good one. And I'll go, okay, well, how about, if, I've got two options here. I could either beat it into submission and you can do a lot of grimacing and groaning and moaning, or we can take a little about a 90 second step aside and I'll improve the circulation of the area. So I will check the muscle and its surrounding neighbors. Then I'll apply the lymphatic drainage and the, and the blood flow stimulation and reflexes, trace the acupuncture meridian that the muscle belongs to, and then retest the muscle. That whole process takes about 90 seconds, maybe two minutes, something of that nature. But what happens as a result of checking the muscle first, activating the circulation, circulation reflexes and checking the muscle second, you have now brought to awareness the dysfunction of the muscle, improved its circulatory environment. And in checking it again, the muscle will always check in a better integrity. It'll hold with greater ease, less discomfort, and most often the range of motions improved. That's gained in, in two minutes. When I go back and palpate, because the entire proprioceptive, the nervous system, the muscle brain communication system has completely reset the tightness of that muscle that was initially in dysfunction. And it is now supple. So I can go back in and I can palpate and the original feature is either A, completely gone or at least mostly gone. And the rigidities and fibrousness in the surrounding muscles are almost all entirely melted away as well. So what it's done for me in my, in my, directly in my massage therapy practice, it enables me to work faster, more effectively, create less pain on the client's behalf, less wear and tear in my, my body, and 30 years into it, <laughs> that's a good thing to have because oftentimes you'll hear massage therapy has a short career because it's very demanding on the body, right? Exactly. And so even just like last week, a uh, client was in and she's been a client for eons, probably a couple decades, something like that. And her sh shoulder was just giving her grief. So I was palpating, doing a bunch of work on it in and around it. And I spotted this one, there's one little spot just kind of over towards the edge of the collarbone, right before where the arm socket is. And it was just tight. It felt like, it reminded me of, if you've ever felt leather shoelaces when they're all bundled up in the package, it felt like leather shoelaces is what it felt like, right? Mm -hmm. But okay, well, this would take, I don't know how long to soften it with standard massage therapy protocol. So I just simply did a little ask of her body if there was some place that we could contact. Because I'll also use uh, the client's hands to contact a reflex or an acupuncture point, which will help then speed up the circulation or speed up the release, right? So I asked her body which reflex or acupuncture point would be beneficial for releasing this little particular aspect of tension found where it was she put her hand on there and I just left my hand on this spot we did some breathing for hmm, about a minute or so and it completely buttered right out by finding the spot of energy of most appropriate energetic release for the tension that was there for whatever reason but the key thing is it speeds up the efficiency and the time and how much I can cover and as well, it unwinds the imbalances. It, for me, it corrects the imbalances that led to the dysfunction in the first place. The dysfunction is far less prone to returning and the results in the clinic last longer. Wow. <laughs> so the 90 second muscle melter is a real gem and it's so easy to for a new practitioner to just get a few familiar muscles that you that you like that you work with. Like when I finished my touch rope level one class, I was really excited and I was really confident with one and a half muscles. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I took those one and a half muscles, and by two, by the time I was two weeks out, I was really confident with three muscles, right? <laughs> and I just sort of expanded it from there. Right? Yeah, baby steps, and and uh, exactly. get to know each muscle, get to know what it can do, and what the technique does for you. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with just how I've also come through with the training that I've done. Yeah. Um, so can you just explain, so our listeners might have come in with no knowledge of what we're talking about. And so now they're going this muscle monitoring. What what does that mean exactly? I know you kind of explained some of it, but maybe we just dive a little bit into it. Hmm. Okay. So muscle monitoring is different than going to a physiotherapist or a chiropractor and having muscle testing done. Um, muscle testing is a, uh, a, a testing of pressure and strength. Muscle monitoring is not a testing of pressure and strength. Muscle monitoring is uh, opening up the communication via muscle response testing to how either A, just simply how a muscle is doing, and it's, it's a light gradual pressure, but it gets at the complete circuitry of the body to give a read on A, how's a muscle doing on its own? And the pressure is applied lightly, gradually over two seconds, about two, three pounds of pressure is all you really need. You don't need to press very firmly, but the most important part is the gradualness of approaching the muscle shaft, because what that does is it allows for really complex feedback between the muscle and the nervous system in the body. And then with muscle monitoring, um, it can be then as a conversation tool, it really opens up the conversation for anything to do with the physical body because every muscle corresponds to an organ gland, et cetera. Uh, it opens up the conversation for muscle monitoring about nutrition. And when I say monitoring, uh, you're looking for the ability of, of a limb to either hold steady to a light pressure or to feel like it wants to let go under a light pressure. Both are good responses. Neither one's a bad response, they're both good. And then you also check to see if the muscle can, can disengage. Every muscle in the body, I explain this to clients, every muscle in the body should be like a clutch in a standard transmission car. It should be able to engage and disengage. So I check each muscle for its ability to engage and disengage. Because if the clutch doesn't engage, that's not good. If the clutch doesn't disengage, that's not good, right? Mm -hmm. has to be able to do both. So I'll check each, each of the muscles for their ability to engage and disengage, clear communication. Um, but muscle monitoring as a tool, it kind of opens the clinic menu for whatever, whatever the practitioner knows, whatever the individual has a curiosity about, and whatever, even if on a self-communication basis, you can easily learn how to do muscle monitoring on yourself, by yourself, using your arm or leg muscles, which then gives you the opportunity to have your body give you directions on a variety of things. Was that kind of where you were going or did I? Absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm uh, interested, you know, we'll have a visual that, um, but you didn't actually even demonstrate it. You just talked right through it. And I think for the listeners to just, to be able to understand you articulated it so beautifully about how it works without any visual on it, which is fantastic because very often <laughs> people will, will try to demonstrate it, but then that shifts people over to, they want to feel it instead of really listening to the description of how it works and why it works. Um, so I, so kudos, <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, uh, one more little bubble on that, Michelle, before I go away. Uh, yeah. So I've had the opportunity to be many, many people's very first opportunity to experience muscle monitoring. And um, the whole key, as you go about introducing somebody that's new to muscle monitoring, the lighter you go, the easier it is. Never, ever, ever think that you're going to try and out arm wrestle everybody because all they'll do is fight against you. And the whole purpose of doing muscle monitoring is to get a, a, a collaborative, cooperative conversation happening. And fighting and out wrestling does, doesn't go in the same sentence as collaborative conversation. So as a person, I'll start with my hand on top of somebody else's forearm, and I'll feel how hard they're pressing up into my forearm. I'll go, no, lighter than that, to where they're just barely holding like the weight of uh, a small paperback novel on top of the wrists. 
mm-hmm. and I'll, I will train the people that I'm working with that are new and familiar with this to not use more pressure than the weight of a small paperback novel on their forearm. And if you train the people that you're introducing this to, to work with a lighter and lighter pressure, you're creating the gift of the opportunity of greater subtle noticing within them. And it's the greater gift of subtle noticing, which then enables your own self-testing to start to be listenable because our body is trying to send us signals all day long. If we just simply go quiet, ask and listen for what the response is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Um, And that's where, you know, to the, what we refer to as the body pendulum. So where the body will sway. And um, when you start to notice when your body actually does move in different directions for different things, um, when you stand present and still long enough to notice those little fluctuations, it, it really is astounding. The information that's being presented to us that we're just so not aware of. Yeah. On that topic, Michelle, I use that when, in my massage clinic practice because when I'm doing body work on somebody, uh, anytime I've most often got both hands occupied and I'm working the musculature, but I'm also curious, is there some place that I can, is there another aspect that I can incorporate to what I'm feeling in the muscles or is there a place where that person could have their hands on a reflex or an acupoint would help speed things along. And I use a very subtle version of the body pendulum. It's all turned sideways. You can kind of see it here. It'll be a movement. Watch what, what happens with my head angle. It'll be a movement from there to about there. So I just get accustomed to a forward movement of my head or my body of about a half an inch to an inch and a half when I've found something and I'll just sort of mentally and or visually scan the body for where can I have that person put their hands or what's another aspect that I can incorporate with this treatment to get at the background of the imbalance of why that muscle is in a state of dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Body pendulum. And exactly. I, I sometimes too, uh, people will describe they get like almost a gut reaction. And sometimes it's, it's not a clench of the gut, but it's just that sensation of something and right away. Yeah. And then some people will refer to that as intuition, mm-hmm. but they're actually aware of there has been a physical shift. And what is yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. You have shared a couple of stories in the clinic. I know you have lots of stories that you can talk about. Is Are there um, any stories that kind of rise to the top of where I, I know for me, there's lots of days where I just go, wow, even though I do this every day, I still go, wow. And I know that happens for you, but are there a couple that kind of rise to the top? It's, there's a lot in there, Michelle. It's hard to cherry pick some favorites, but I'll pick one uh, off just off the top of my head. A uh, gal that had been a client for oh, quite some time. And uh, she initially came to see me for digestive concern. She had IBS Crohn's going on for quite some period of time. And uh, I was taking touch rail training as well as about a hundred other certificates of training over the years. So I spent a lot of time in the classroom learning lots of cool stuff. But the key thing is just balance the body using whatever skill sets you have and you'll probably do fine. Uh, anyways, in fairly short order, within a couple, three sessions, uh, what she would describe as a samurai knife fight going on in her, abdo- in her abdomen completely disappeared, and she was able to eat even some of the no-no foods that she shouldn't be eating. She was able to eat those. Uh, fast forward a few years, uh, she finds herself pregnant and comes to see me for some balances during working on women prior to becoming pregnant. And during pregnancy is a great way to ensure a healthy baby. And I'm also a big fan of doing nutrient clearing, like doing balances on both the mother and father prior to conception, if you can, because a conceived baby is always a 50-50 combination of the health of the mother and father at the point of gestation or conception rather, plus gestation, right? Mm -hmm. So those balances can have a positive outcome, but she ended up with a, a beautiful little baby boy who apple doesn't fall far from the tree, sensitive tummy. Mm-hmm. and uh due to his sensitive tummy um she was having a heck of a time with him being able to sleep because he you could tell that he was in abdominal discomfort and the only way that this little baby could sleep was if she was in the easy chair reclined and he was snuggled up on her chest and he would sleep for 20 to 30 minutes at a shot and then wake up in a in a painful scream 
Wow. So that was the first month of life. So having a baby in your late 30s, when your endurance isn't quite it was in your early 20s, and you're now awake almost 24-7, it gets mm -hmm. to be a pretty hard go to gig or gig to go, right? Yeah. So uh, her and her little boy came along, and we just uh, snuggled the little boy up on her chest, and I did a balance on her for him. So the balance was done by the mom or the baby. And uh, that night, she laid him down in his bassinet, and he slept for four hours solid. Oh, wow. After Weeks of treatment. He was now sleeping through the night for about six hours at a, at, a, at a stretch. So the difference you can make in somebody's life. Uh, yeah. Kids and digestive uh, niece of mine had twins. And sometimes you see your family and your nieces and nephews a lot, and sometimes they're just sort of out there living their own life. And I wish she'd had twins, and thought that's pretty cool. And uh, when I finally found out from my sister-in-law, her mom that one of the twins was having severe gastric difficulties to the point where it was just getting to the little girl, well, there was almost nothing she could eat. And she was starting to not be as much weight gain as her, as her sibling. I said, oh my goodness, we'll let her know about this, right? And uh, let her know to come see me. And so she came to see me and uh, children come in two categories. Those that can lay still and follow instructions and those that cannot. So for children that can lay still and follow instructions, bring them in for an appointment. For those that cannot lay still and follow instructions, which is kind of like a year and a half, two-year-old, <laughs> have them stay at home with somebody and do what's a, a distant healing session on them. So mm -hmm. I did a distant healing session by the mom to affect the little girl with the gastric. So she had a full-on GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder of a fairly severe nature. And uh, so we did the, did the treatment on her, got home that night, and apparently that little girl that night voraciously attacked every piece of food that was on the table. <laughs> And as well, decided that that night she didn't need her soother to go to sleep. Oh, interesting. And two days, yeah. Yeah. And after the second balance, uh, which was about a week or so later, she decided, you know what? This diaper thing, I'm ready for my big girl pants. So she was making these decisions on her own, which were previously not even conversable with her. She was just like, no, oh, I must have my soother, whatever the case may be. So it was interesting yeah. to see the advancements that came along from straightening out the, the intestinal tract and straightening out the, the gut. And then there would be so many soft tissue stories. Uh, oh, here's a neat one. Um, a lady who's been a client for quite some time had a mini stroke, a little TIA. Uh, nothing too major, but just a little bit and could notice that her motor, her movement wasn't quite as smooth. So we did a, did a treatment on her brain centers for the smoothness of the motor signaling and there was a significant difference. She commented a significant difference in how confident she felt on her feet and the evenness of her stride. Uh, she commented then that she was tired. Her energy wasn't quite what it did, was. So I did a balance for her energy production systems of her body in the next treatment and her energy improved. I noticed that her speech was just a, still a little bit, flur not flurry, but the enunciation wasn't quite as crystal sharp as she typically had been. So then because, our, our work here from Touch for Health has also launched into many, many courses involving working with the detailed wiring of the brain and very specific aspects of neurological function of the brain. I worked on her, the speech formation centers and the integration between the left and right brain of the speech formation centers. And when she came back next week, it was noticeable how much more clear and articulate her enunciation was. So there's just so many applications that really is there. It's, uh, it's quite a, quite a delightful tool. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, in a recent conversation that we had, which is kind of what led to what we're talking about now, um, you had talked about touch for health being the glue. And, and I know you, you uh, brought it around to, to being the broth in the soup, which is beautiful because that's where, you know, <clears throat> lots of the love goes is into there. Um, so I'm just thinking about if you wanted to expand a little bit about that glue, you've talked a little bit about how you used it in massage therapy. And then we've got some of the case opportunities of things that you've witnessed, um, but maybe some links that might come across in some other ways that people use it in 
with modalities or even even other professions? Um, probably just sort of a random thought that comes to mind. Right now, there's uh, people who are living a different life in 2021 than what we've been accustomed to. And there's a lot of people that are spending more time at school and kids are having to learn at home a lot of times versus being in a classroom. It, it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's different trying to learn at home from a computer screen. And there can be different stresses that come along with it. So in regards to the glue of how Touch for Health helps, it's, uh, there's many self-help tools within Touch for Health that helps to make it easier for our emotion and our, our emotions to be settled and our mind to be calm and clear in many, many different life instances. And there's a very simple little te technique which involves holding the forehead. And if you wanna do the advanced version, front and back of the head, but this little technique here of holding front and back of the head is a spectacular way to help family and friends in any situation. And uh, I've, I've got a few clients that work in the psychology industry as well, and I share that with them. And it's something that they weren't familiar with from their, from their psychology training. And they've gotten, they've provided me really good feedback of using it in their clinic session with their clients, but as well having the clients hold their own head while they talk about things. And you can do this standing, sitting, lying down, it doesn't matter. It's been very, very good in that regards. Um, any of the, go ahead, Michelle. I was just going to say for those people that are listening, what Greg did with his hand is he just put his whole hand across his forehead and he put the other hand across the back of the skull um, and just held it that way. Sometimes it's fingertips, but you had done the whole palm, which is uh, one I recommend at bedtime. So, yeah. So, sorry, I just wanted them to know in case they were trying to figure out what you were doing and couldn't see. All right. There's lots of people that do nutritional-based practices and consulting. And I, I think the, what I find to be of tremendous value with muscle monitoring is it takes so much of the guesswork out. It really doesn't matter what your clinic skill set is. You, uh, you're going to have a tool, a system of education that you've been presented with through your training, which will give you tools to listen, observe, and troubleshoot. And in the process of listening, observing, and troubleshoot, you're going to come up with a variety of options of, hmm, okay, so the person has A, B, C, and D going on for profile presentation. Which do I, which do I, which will be most beneficial for this person today? To approach first a c b or d and it's a little bit of guesswork it really is but with muscle monitoring regardless of what it is that you wish to approach you can simply have that person's body give both of you instructions it's not you the clinician telling that person what to do it's that person's knowing inside of their body giving both of you instructions as to what would be of highest benefit for them <clears throat> so one of the things that i especially with nutritional practice a lot of it's sort of buy, try, and hope. And if anything, from muscle, it's pretty often that I'll have clients come in with their, their bag of nutritional supplements. And I've found tremendous value in evaluating nutritional supplements on a variety of measurement scales to help them maximize the return on investment that they get when they go to the vitamin store or they go to see their practitioner, right? And find out which ones are, are really working well for them. Because otherwise, it's just so much buy, try, and hope. Um, really honestly, in regards with the, the glue that holds it together, Michelle, it, it doesn't matter what way you wish to approach health or work with it. All you're ever attempting to do is ascertain what's best for what's going on with that person and their various imbalances that they'd like to have less imbalance. And regardless of your skill set, regardless of your approach, the ability to use muscle monitoring to allow that conversation and the guidance and the knowledge to come from the client's body is invaluable and irre irreplaceable because otherwise you're just simply doing best guesswork. Right. Or following a protocol that was following established yeah. that might work and might not work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I use that exact uh, case scenario quite often with massage clients is in, in massage school, you're taught orthopedic assessments. And if, orthopedic assessment shows that you have such and such condition. Well, you your first treatment for such and such condition is to do protocol A, followed by protocol B, followed by protocol C, and follow up in a week, and then you do protocol, et cetera. There's protocol set for it, right? Right. But 
that's just a canned cookie cutter approach. The beautiful thing about muscle monarchy is it enables you to individualize each time you're together, what is the best approach? Right, yeah. Um, and then if you're able to use that tool in your own self-care, then you have it at your fingertips, which is also the other delight. You're not waiting for the appointment really? to find the person who might know the information, but you can actually start right then and, and, and just uh, get going. So, yeah. Um, beautiful. Now you have a workshop coming up on nutrition. Um, so for those people that are listening to this, um, could be a podcast or you could be watching it as a webinar. Um, this would be for the end of May, 2021. And you're going to be doing, we, we originally titled it the ABCs of nutrition using muscle monitoring. And then you did the ABQs. <laughs> what are the questions and how do you get the answers? Um, do you want to just talk a little bit about um, when you introduce nutrition and what kinds of things people might be able to experience? Because in their minds, I know they'll be thinking about, well, we've got that pyramid that tells us about all our food choices and what's good for us and how many and all those things. Can you just shed a little bit of light on nutrition from a different viewpoint? Sure. There's uh, in regards to that wonderful food pyramid, there's, that is one of several tens of thousands of resources on nutrition. You can go into any bookstore, library, online, and you can find literally tens of thousands of guiding approaches to, nu to nutrition, all of which have their value. So I won't really be so much spending so much time teaching about nutrition. What I am going to be doing is teaching the people who attend, either present or if attend future recording, because it will be recorded and available for future use, um, help them learn to have their body tell them what's good for them. So that the class is going to be in two segments. The first segment is designed to introduce, and first seg segment one is, is a required step for segment two. It'll be a before lunch, after lunch, so far as my time zone is concerned, right? The two hours in the morning is designed to take a person who's not yet familiar with muscle monitoring and guide them through a variety of methods, including the body sway response, um, of how to get used to what a body response to muscle monitoring feels like. Sway forward, the sway back, or an indicator muscle holding steady or letting go. And then we'll move from that into some initial, bring along some food samples with you. Grab, grab some, vitam, some vitamins out of your vitamin cupboard, grab some foods out of your cupboard, grab some foods out of your fridge and have them handy with you. And we'll do some playing around with those to see how your body responds to the things that you have been buying and eating on a regular basis. And then in the afternoon, we will be going more, now that you've got the idea of how to use muscle monitoring as a skill set for nutrition, I'll be going and giving you a, um, more, um, more exploration tools. I'll show you and, and help you learn how to evaluate uh, nutrients on a variety of percentile basis. I like working with percents because they're easy, easy to count. And it's, it's an easy way to get a, a numerical evaluation on things mm -hmm. and uh, how to teach percentages of uh, nutrient access, benefit, need, uh, life energy, how much does it support you? What's your ability to break it down and, and recognize it? Because sometimes we can really benefit from a compound. We can really need the compound, but our body can't recognize it. And then that equals either A, get a different brand or do a balance towards the nutrient, right? Yeah. I'll also teach you how to use body charts for helping to ascertain nutrient reflexes, organ and gland reflexes, and how to work with uh, fine tuning in so far as their, their nutritional needs. I'll help you learn how if something needs more or less of. Uh, it will be exploring how to use your muscle monitoring skills in some of my favorite ways in clinic that I help people fine tune their nutrient, nutrient intake profile, whether it be on for foods and or supplements and or to support a specific health objective. So it will be, uh, it will go from beginner to intermediate to fairly, wow, holy, <laughs> my goodness, there's a lot we can do with this. In a, in a few short period. hours. <laughs> yes. But I think so that lends itself to the, to the, the fact that, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, 
I said, regardless of your skill set, there will be much to be gained. And, and I was just thinking, you know, sometimes it sounds so complex what we're doing, but it, it, it's so simple. And then sometimes you think it, well, it can't possibly be that simple. And, and it, then, is that simple. it is. And we try sometimes just to make it complicated, but it, it, it is just it's not very simple. Yeah. 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 Particularly if, if you're is. using that muscle monitoring. Yeah. And it is, it's the ask body questions because otherwise it's just by try and hope. Exactly. And you say that quickly. So it, the first time I heard it by try and hope, it was like, whoop, it went past me, but then it was the second time, but it, it really, people spend a lot of money on buy, try, and then hope it works. And then if it doesn't, it goes to the back of the cupboard. And then one day, 10 years from now, you go back through it and go, it's all expired. And <laughs> Right. You know, and you wonder why you bought it, you know, so, but you already knew it didn't actually work anyway, because it ended up in the back of the cupboard. If it was what you needed, it would have stayed at the front and you would have been using it. So, yeah, if you're a diligent person. With the memory, job, memory suit. so my vitamin cupboard in my kitchen, how I, how I pick my daily supplements, I just sort of see which one pops up. Uh, the vitamin covered. So I'll look at each bottle and I'll, I'll get my own body, my own body muscle monitoring response, which one, and then I'll grab the bottle and I'll do little muscle monitors regarding it's one, two or three of them that goes into my hand at that, that point in time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm the same too. And sometimes I'll go, geez, I haven't taken that for a while. And then it's like, no, it's not necessary. I was like, Oh, okay. And instead of fretting about, Oh, I, sh you know, I should have been on that regime. I should have stayed you know, in the product. No, I didn't actually need it. But then tomorrow I might, it might be that what comes to the forefront and, and then that's okay. Yeah. So I'd like to divert us a little bit from that conversation into something that does still pertain to the profession. And that is you have been sitting on the board for the Canadian Association of Bioenergetic Wellness for over two decades. <laughs> it's a long time to sit on the board. Um, and I know that <laughs> I know you've commented about it. You're there because you like to know what's going on. And I thought maybe it would be nice to talk a little bit about from the professional side. What is it that you benefit from by being involved in an association that supports this kind of profession? I guess first off, uh, I care about the whole muscle monitoring science, the same touch rail too much to walk away. And I want to it's my way of contributing back and doing a little something back in kind for uh, a gift that has brought so many gifts to my life and been able to then enable me to bring gifts to other people's lives. Um, I enjoy being in on making sure that our, our organization continues to thrive and grow and let people know about this wonderful work. Uh, like to see it in caring, capable hands. I, I never never cease to be amazed at the skill set of the people who step forward to spend time also making sure that this, this the muscle monitoring touch for health gets known to other people. Um, in regards to my professional world, I, I haven't really thought about it much about why it's important to me on a professional stand. It's more important to me on a personal standing, I guess. Uh, and as a registered massage therapist, I also pay attention to what's happening in the, in the massage industry. And I like to pay attention to what's happening in our industry. And I like to see them taken care of and, and growing and knowing. Mm -hmm. so, but it's, really, it's probably a personal passion more than a professional passion to share the truth. And I think that's an interesting um, observation because it is the relationships that come out of being a part of a professional association where you actually get to know the other people and you're not just somebody that you pass because you're in the same profession, but you actually get to know who they are and what they do. And in this, this field, you're doing wellness, which is you do get to know people. You get to know their, their quirks, their vulnerabilities, and then also um, the strengths. And so it's uh, for, for me, it's always interesting the, the, ki the kinds of people that come into this circle, but also then the relationships that come out of it. So and that's probably one of the more heartfelt, golden, valuable aspects of it is you get to spend some time 
collaborating and in the company and doing teamwork with some really wonderful, wonderful people that otherwise you just don't have the opportunity to be in the company of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you get to teamwork on some very fabulous projects together. It's, it's very, it's exciting. Uh, it's emotionally rewarding. Uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful way to contribute some time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was saying to you that I had a meeting this morning and, and it took us 45 minutes just to get to the meeting part because we were having so much fun talking to each other and supporting yeah. each other on the background of the projects we were working on on our own and just sharing that information. And then pretty soon we are actually referencing other things that would help each other until we got to the, to the part of the meeting. And then the meeting, I think it took about 10 minutes when we were all finished. Uh, because the, the most important part really was the getting together and Saturday morning is always a good time. So um, I would like to take you uh, into a little bit about dance because I try also with my podcast to involve something related to dance so that dancers can really realize the potential of this information. And I came to you because, <laughs> because of the injuries I had as a dancer <laughs> and as a teacher um, but one of the things that always stuck out for me was your experience working with one of the dance companies in Calgary. And when you expressed to me that you could go and sit in a show and you, you didn't go to the show to see the artwork, you went because you could watch the bodies and you could, you could see how they were working as they went across the stage and you would know how to, you could fix them. And I thought there's no way I will ever have enough knowledge to be able to ever do that. <laughs> And uh, you've already articulated that Touch for Health gives you um, a background into the subtleties of the body. And you're right, because I did develop those skills. But I would love for you to share that story, because uh, it did have a profound effect on me. And I think about it often when I'm doing things. Hmm. That was a fun time, actually. Uh, so a Calgary dance company, they're still in existence. I'll say their name just to give them a plug they do great work. Decidedly Jazz Dance Works does great work. They do great work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this was early in my clinic practice and I was just looking for ways to reach out and contribute. How I ended up with the Decidedly Jazz Dance Works connection, I can't really remember to tell you the truth. Maybe one of my clients was a dancer there. Maybe that's what it was. But I would go to their practice uh, studio and I would just hang out, I'd give permission to be there and uh, clear with the instructor, et cetera, that kind of thing, with the objective of seeing what I could do to help the dancers. So I've mentioned a little bit earlier how eventually what you end up being gifted the opportunity of as a, as a touch for health first practitioner is the ability to notice what a, an indicator muscle change is. An indicator muscle is any muscle that you're using, arm, leg, body sway, self-testing there's a whole myriad of ways that that internal noticing can come of an indicator muscle change and again all an indicator muscle change means as a term is hey we just found something right so i had developed at that point in time a good sensitivity to my own self-noticing and self-noticing is a really powerful tool to apply in many ways in your life i was using it to watch the dancers move and some of them I knew from just conversation that they had, oh, my hip bothers me or my shoulder bothers me or something like that. And others, I didn't know anything about them. But I would sort of tune in. And then because I had my massage therapy training, I had learned the musculature. And when you take touch for health, you learn to work with lots of muscles. So you soon learn that, well, muscles are a fun thing to work with. So I would just sort of visually scan the dancer's body. And sometimes it was easy to see those who found a movement very easy and graceful. And other times you could spot there was just something a little bit off in the smoothness, smoothness or the grace or the range of motion or the timing. There was something that wasn't quite on, right? So then during the break, I would then have that person come over to me and I just stretch them out on the floor and I would check the muscles that I had noticed, whether it be a deltoid or a pectoral muscle or a back muscle or a hip muscle or a thigh muscle or a lower leg muscle involved with footwork. I would check the muscles that I had gained a self-noticing of that could do a beneficial correction. And I'd dig out my Touch for Health book and I would check the muscles and I would do the corrections. And so to check a muscle and do a correction takes about 30 seconds of muscle in that neighborhood. So I would go through and I would check, do a whole bunch of corrections on them. 
and during their five minute break and then send them back out. And sure enough, they would comment, wow, yeah, I can do that movement with greater ease. I can do that movement with greater strength. My balance feels better in that position and or their timings on or the range of motion improved. So it was really just all about using my skills as a clinician to scan, visually scan the body, see whether it was an arm, shoulder, hip, leg, thigh that I got a self-noticing on, some kind of a self-indicator to change, and then check the muscle, apply the corrections, recheck the muscle. And again, that it's called an information sandwich. And when you're teaching it to touch for health class, the information sandwich involves bringing awareness to the body by testing the muscle, applying corrections to the circulation, and then rechecking the muscle. And that provides a recalibration of the proprioceptors. Proprioceptors are just little message senders in the body located in the nerves and the muscles and the joints and the, the fascia. They, they send information about things. So it creates a recalibration of the proprioceptive to the nervous system, to the muscle, to the movement pattern that enables now a movement to happen with greater ease, strength, and balance. And it was quite fun and did that for a while. And uh, yeah, it made, made quite a positive difference for people. Yeah, so one it, thing that I would I often thought would be great is to see even just the lymphatic reflexes, because the lymphatic reflexes are, are spots that you can rub just on, the, on the, the front of the torso. There's a whole bunch of them that catch the arm and the leg muscles on the inside and outside of the thighs and the low back. Rubbing those as a refresher to keep your muscles refreshed and energized or as a pre-event thing, I've often thought it would be absolutely delightful to, in every movement-related studio, to see a wall chart of just the lymphatic reflexes. So, and with the muscles named, perhaps so those who know the muscle names can go, oh, that muscle, right? But Lincoln. to do the, yeah. the lymphatic circulation reflexes on a head-toe basis for a little bit of a recharge takes about 20 to 30 seconds. And that's a great way to recharge and refresh the muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, you know, that one first thing in the morning, it's just like, boom, you're ready to go. It's wonderful. Um, and if you do those, if you do those uh, reflexes with an intention, it helps to move that intention forward with possibility into your world. Uh, lovely. Lovely. Um, I had the privilege of one of my buddies who owns a dance studio hired me one weekend to come for the whole weekend. And my job was just to pull dancers off the dance floor, give them a balance and send them back. And it was like, it was like having your cake, your ice cream. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful, <laughs> you know, um, because I, I wasn't worried about what they were doing on the dance floor, but I, I did have one dancer um, and she, at that time she was eight or nine and she had never slept through the night. I didn't know any of this. She hadn't slept through the night her entire life. So her poor mother was taking care of her, um, and not sleeping through the night. And she couldn't go across the floor with a simple walk. There was no way she could coordinate her hands and her, her feet. Um, so in dance class, you know, she was trying her, her hardest to do something, but it didn't coordinate. And we did a balancing session. And uh, they sent her back out on the dance floor and she was like a completely different child. It was the most amazing transformation. Um, and as it turned out, after that one session, she just slept through the night. And it was like, huh? well, I, her mom just, her mom, her mom came the next day and to tell me the story of the background of their family and uh, just cried. She said, I cannot believe the difference. And it was like, who would have thought that from a little bit of lack of coordination going across a floor, how profound that would be in the, in the shift. So, but that was inspired by, I had shared the conversation that you and I had had about what you did with dancers and uh, kudos to my friend for saying, come and do that. Let's, let's see what yeah, you can do. Really yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of other quick stories that come to mind. Uh, one involving my son and his uh, childhood soccer career. So he played soccer as a kid for, hmm, I don't know, 10, 12 years, something like that. And it's a team sport. So as a team sport, the teams that work together gel and they have more success, right? So uh, the coach at the time had, uh, it was a dad coach. So one of, the, one, of the kid, one of the dads on the team was the coach, as is often the case with kids' sports groups, right? 
And he'd been a client of mine. And I'd mentioned to him about the idea of, well, how about if you get me into the locker room and I'll just lead the kids through some, uh, what we call it, like the brain gym, switch on, get the left, right brain going, get the top, bottom brain, switch on some reflexes, rub the lymphatics. So I just led them through that with a languaging of how getting the left and right brain working also gives them the ability to see the left and right sides of the field and how the ball is moving that way. The top and bottom, the, foot, the, clip, the near and the far gives them the ability to see their players and the ball as it comes closer and are further to them. And uh, then the, the, the lymphatic reflexes were about keeping their muscles strong and refreshed so they have greater running ability. So I just led the entire locker room of 12 year old boys through a brain gym exercise and rubbing the lymphatics on their own body. They went out and they played as a unit that game unlike they had ever played as a unit. And it was absolutely stunning to see And boy. And I've often thought with, regardless of the level of team sport, whether it be childhood, intermediate competitive, or especially at the upper competitive levels, uh, when you can get a team to gel, there is amazing things that happen. And especially at the upper levels of competitiveness, whether it be singular sport or team sport, the difference between first place and fourth place, fourth place being you don't get a medal, you get a thanks for coming out award. The difference between first place and fourth place is very marginal. It's a very slim margin of difference between first and fourth. And anytime that I've had an opportunity to use these techniques with people who are of a upper level athletic ability, they always have lots of mus muscles that aren't working correctly. And especially if you put them in a position where they're thinking about the event, it will show that lots of the muscles of the body are not integrated and engaged when it comes to thinking about the event they're about to go compete in. So when you do a balance for them, it makes a tremendous difference for them to be at their best as an individual or as a team member. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I've had that same experience uh, with dance choreographies and groups of kids um, and, and giving them new concepts to work with too. And if you um, balance everybody together at the beginning, you walk right through the concepts you want to explore. And if you don't, someone's not on the page with you, <laughs> they're not going to be on the page. Then it's just going to be, you know, I'm not going to try this or I can't do this or it's too hard for me. Yeah. And those, that conversation just disappears. Yeah. Yeah. I know we yeah, could go. Bring a wonderful cohesiveness to a group. They really do. Mm -hmm. So I know you and I could tell stories for a long time and you've had years in the, in the uh, clinic to be able to, to build that repertoire. Um, I would like to uh, just bring it to a close by saying that both of us are, are part of the leadership team for Can Be Well. Uh, the Canadian Association of Bioenergetic Wellness. And so it's known as canbewell.org if people are looking for us. And someone had asked me a couple of weeks ago, how do they find out about a Touch for Health class? And that's where those classes will be listed. They'll be on the, the class listings and you can find all the instructors there and the directory of people and the different kinds of modalities they do. So if anybody's looking for you, Greg, you're listed in there and uh, your background is there but also you're listed as a member of the board of directors as well. And uh, so I just wanted to bring awareness to that. Is there a website that people can locate you at or you're, you're fun with Facebook? Other than, uh, <laughs> other than canbewell.org, you can find me on my personal website, which is gregweb.ca. So that's triple W dot Greg, one G at each end, Greg Webb, two Bs at the same end, gregweb.ca. Perfect. Awesome. So with that, it's always a pleasure. I thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And uh, for the listeners or the people who've been watching, I hope they've enjoyed the, the kind of the weaving in and around the topic of Touch for Health that we've been able to explore. And I hope we've enticed a few people to say, I can do that and uh, sign up for a class, find out some information, check out uh, Canby Wells' YouTube channel because there's lots of videos there and you've presented on several of them. So if they're looking to see more of what you've done, then you're there as well. So. One okay. more thing before we close out. Yes, uh, go so ahead. Michelle, you, you mentioned 
anybody can do this. I think that uh, that is, I didn't mention that, but one of the things that I really absolutely, completely so tremendously appreciate about what Touch for Health has done, it's given the opportunity to bring out the healer in everyone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everyone. And if you look at the international community of people who do muscle monitoring, of which there are hundreds of thousands in every corner of the world, Every single one of us comes from a completely different background. And I've also interestingly found a lot of times the people who become the real, oh my God, this is such a light bulb moment for me, don't already have a big, huge background. It can be their introduction. It can, so it, it can be their go-to thing. So whether you are completely new and you're just curious about your own personal health or helping people or helping yourself, or you have already an established clinic skill set that you wish to expand on, uh, Touch for Health is an extremely valuable and very diverse, diverse tool. <laughs> well said. Well said. So you've been listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and may balance and flow find you each day. Take care. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs>